So in this video, we're gonna break down CSWA exam sample. This is one part of the exam. And I'm gonna break down step by step and you can just copy me, you can shadow me, and then also you can practice, okay? So first let's break down, let's see what we have here. So we have the task one. So material is alloy steel. Then we have two global variables. We have A100 and we have B20. So this is millimeters. I just forgot to put here just to make sure. And then we have to calculate the mass. So this is task one. We have four tasks. We're gonna start with the task one. So we have to create this model here. So let's a little bit study this model. So first of all, that you have to check out is your coordinate system. So that's the most important thing because like if you get wrong coordinate system, then two things will go wrong. First of all, when you have to calculate the center of mass, we'll be completely wrong, but also when you're gonna have to make some changes, right, dimensions or adding some things, also you can make things wrong because of the wrong position of the coordinate system. So if you look at this, we don't see really here that's completely in the middle, but if you look at the other views, we can see this is completely in the middle, right? So we have symmetrical both sides. So that's our coordinate system. We see how it's positioned like this, and that's what we have to do. So if I just analyze this from here, how, how I would start doing that, I have to first check out what are these holes here, right? So what is inside? Is this like shell or not, right? So I have to check this out. So if I look at this section here, I can see that this hole here goes through the model, right? So that's the one thing. Also, if you zoom in this section, you can see that we have the shell here, right? So this is the hole, as you can see, and this is the shell, right? This is one millimeter. So that's very important to know. Those are the details that you have to study before you start doing something because you're gonna make all of things wrong. So we know the coordinate system, we know these details. So how are we gonna start doing this? So first what I would do, I would just create this sketch, right? This one here, this, then I would extrude that. Then what I would do, I would create this part here, this, this one here. Then I would create a hole and then I would put a shell. And then at the end, here we have rip, right? This one here this one and on the other side. And that's pretty much it, right, for the task one. So let's get started with that. So we have two global variables, A100, B20. So A is this dimension, as you can see, and B is this hole, the diameter of this hole. That's also very important to pay attention to, okay? Then we have 50 millimeter this. Then we have here radius of this one here, 20 millimeters. And this one here also, okay, we know it's 25. So yeah, let's get started. We're gonna open the new file. That's gonna be the part file. And the first thing that we wanna do, I want to make sure that I see where is my coordinate system, right? So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go to the isometric view. And now I can see this is my coordinate system, right? So that means I'm gonna start creating a sketch on the front plane. But before I do that, I'm gonna exit the sketch. Before I do that, what I want to do, I want to define my global variables, right? So I'm going to go here to the tools, equations. So we're going to have A, that's going to be 100. And then we're going to have B, that's going to be 20. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We can click OK. Also, what we can do now at the beginning, we can add a material to not forget later. We're going to add alloy steel. So you can just go here to the con Feature Manager Design Tree, right click, add it, and you can just choose your alloy steel, apply, and that's it. Okay. So, also, what you want to do, you want to go here to the hide all types. And here, as you can see, is view origin. I just want to make sure that I see this is here because this is what we see on our drawing, right? So, we have to go on the front plane. So, we're going to go on the front plane with the first sketch. So since everything's symmetrical, I can go with center rectangle. I'm gonna start here. So that's the first part. Then I'm gonna put dimensions. As we know, this is A, right? So basically you just go here with equals 
and just choose global variable A and click OK. Then also we know that this one here is 50. So we're going to go here. One second, 50, like this. And then what do we have to create? We have to go here to the center point arc. So this first one is 50, this, this one here. And this one here, if I remember well, is 20. Right, so we're gonna go to the smart dimensions and we're gonna put here 20. No, all of these have different extrusion depth, but I'm gonna teach you here if you don't know one trick. I'm gonna show you how to use the same sketch by multiple features, right? I could go and create each of these sketch separately for each feature, but I can save my time. I can create one sketch here and then I can use this sketch with multiple features. And this is what we're gonna do. Because let me just show you one thing. If you go back to this drawing, we can see that we have a different depth here, right? Of this part, this one here, and this one here, right? So this one here, let me show you. This one here is 60, okay? Then we have this one here, the small one, it's 30. And then we have this one here, 50, right? So we have different depths. And maybe you would go with three different sketches, but we're gonna use one sketch. So let's go back to the part and let's exit the sketch. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna basically just go to the features, extruded boss base. I'm gonna select this sketch. And I'm gonna choose here mid plane because we have symmetry. And I'm gonna choose 50. And make sure here, selected contours, right? For example, I can clear this. I'm, you can select no different contours as you can see, right? That's the whole point. Now we're gonna select only this one and click okay. And now, for example, you don't have to create a new sketch, new feature. You can basically just go to this sketch, select this sketch and just go with another extruded boss base. And now we can go here to the selected contours. We can choose this one here. And let's go here. We have, if I'm not mistaken, we have 30 like this, right? So basically this is it. And now we have to go with a third. We are gonna also select sketch here, extruded boss base. We're going to select the contour, but this one here. And we're going to go with 60 and click OK. So this is the technique that's called using the sketch by multiple features. This can save up your time, OK? That's one trick if you didn't know. So this is what we got for now. Now, what is the next step? Let's go to the drawing. The next step that I would do here I would create this part, right? So basically what we have here, we have 80 millimeters. That's completely in the middle, right? As you can see, we have 80 millimeters and here we have 40 millimeters diameter. And also we have the depth or the length 30 millimeters. So that's what we're gonna create. Then after that, we're gonna go with this hole through all with global variable B and then the third step, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go with a shell, right? As you can see, this one here, one millimeter. So let's do this. So let's go to the part. So let's go here and I want to put this in isometric view like this. So we have to go here to the front plane again. Let's go with a circle. Now I forgot what is the diameter of this circle. So let me check quickly. Fifteen millimeters. Okay. I created this, but I forget. So let's go here. Fifteen millimeters, and now we have the length eighty millimeters. Okay. So we're gonna go here to the features. 
mid plane 80 millimeters like this let's click okay This is pretty much it. And now what we have to do, we have to add the auto part here, right? As you know, 40 millimeters and 30 length. So also we're gonna create a new sketch. We're gonna go to the right plane. You can also go to the top plane if you want. It really doesn't matter. Now, what are we gonna do? We're gonna use here feature revolt boss base. So the first thing that we have to do, I wanna create a center line, right? We need something for rotation, right? Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just create this. Like this, and now we can put a dimension. So we have 40 millimeters, a diameter that's radius 20, and we have length 30 millimeters. We have to change this. 30 millimeters, like this. Let's click OK. Let's go to the features, revolved boss base, and let's click OK. And that's pretty much it. Now what do we want to do, we want to put here a shell, right? So we're going to go here to the shell. Let's go with one millimeter, and we're going to just select this face. Let's click OK. And yeah, this is it. Actually, I made a mistake. What do we have to do? Let's delete shell. We have to create a hole, right? It has to go through all. So let's go to the right plane and let's go with a circle. And this is our global variable P, right? So that's very important to know. So we're gonna go here with equal and we're gonna choose global variable B 20 millimeters. And let's go here with the features, extrude cut, and we're gonna choose here true all both, like this, let's click okay. And now we can go with a shell. Okay, so this is very important. Those are the little details that you have to pay attention to. We can select this one millimeter, let's click okay. And yeah, this is our third step that we wanna, wanted to create, right? Um, and now if you, for example, go and you check, if you check the section, this is what we saw in the drawing, right? No, the last step that we have to do, we have to create a rib, right? So here we have the rib. So we're gonna go to the drawing just to make sure we get our right dimensions. So what do we have here? We have eight millimeters and 20 millimeters on the both sides. And also we have here the width five millimeters. So we have eight, 25. So let's go here and we're gonna choose here, right plane like this. And the only thing that we need here, we just need one line, that's it. Let me just go here. like this, one line, and now we just have to put dimensions. So we have eight here. Eight millimeters. Here we have, I think 20 millimeters, if I remember, and that's it. Yeah, let's click OK. And now we can go to the features. We can go to the rib. We have this direction towards material. And here we have, Thickness, five millimeters. Let's click OK. And this is what we want, right? And now we have to create this on the other side. And that's going to be very, very simple. We can just use the mirror. We're going to use the plane. We can use the front plane. And we're going to choose your features to mirror. We can just select this one. And we can click OK. And yeah, this is it. So we can put this in isometric view. And this is from the drawing. Now let's calculate the mass. So I hope that we made everything good. Mass is 289.30. So let's check if that's correct. 29, that's it. That's within 1%, so that's correct. Answer. 
Now this is the task one. Now we go to the task two. In the task two, we have the same material. We have to calculate the mass, but we have to change global variables. So A is 120 and B is 36. So we can do this very quickly. 120 and 36 equations, manage equations. So A will be 120 and B will be 36. And let's click OK. That's it. Let's calculate the mass. 327.22. Let's check out. That's it. That's correct answer. Let's go to the task three. Now, in the task three, we have to make two changes. And we have to calculate the mass. So as you can see, this radius here, we have to increase to 50. And then also here, we have to put this rib to the 10. And then we have to calculate the mass. So let's just make these two changes. So the first change is we have to go to the sketch, first sketch that we created. And instead of radius 20, we have radius 50. Super simple. But as you can see here, we have to connect with a line. So let's just choose a line and let's just connect this. like this, let's click OK, and let's exit. So that's the first change that we have to do. And the second change is related to this rip. So we're gonna go to the rip, we're gonna go to the sketch, and just change here to 10. That's it, let's click OK, let's exit the sketch, and now we can calculate the mass, and that's 441.05. So let's see, 441.04, that's it, that's correct answer. And we have the last task, and that's number four. So let's check out. So in the task four, we have to calculate the center of the mass, and we only have to change two global variables, A to 90 and B to 60. So let's go, let's change global variables. 90. And then we have here 16. Let's click OK. Now also, if you don't see the updates immediately, then just click here, Rebuild. Here we have Rebuild. But if you want to see updates immediately, make sure you have this checked. Automatically Rebuild, OK? If you have these problems. So let's go to the mass properties. We have 0, minus 20.59 and minus 2.99. So let's check out this. Minus 20.59, minus 2.99, and x is zero. So yeah, this is correct answer. And this is just one part of the CSWA exam, full breakdown. And in the following weeks, you're gonna find more breakdowns of CSWA exam and CSWP exam. But if you want the full access, to the preparation of the CSWA exam, the CSWP exam, and learn all the tools that you need to know. I have the community where I teach people this. I helped hundreds of people to pass or solve a certification exam, CSWA and CSWP. You can check on the link below. I hope that you like this video. If you have any questions, you can just post it below. See you in another video.